did I just tell you that the scanner is useless? Pretty sure I did. I can prove it to you. Just wait. You've seen these unboxed. You've seen people review them. That is not what I'm gonna do here today. Look at that. I mean, I'm unboxing it. But I'm gonna show you how useless this is. All these, all of these, the scanner, the dongle, the Bluetooth, you know, Bluetooth. It's all useless. Watch. So let's watch it. It's not doing anything. It's still not doing anything. Hello? It's useless. Do I look stupid right now? You're damn right I do. The scanner does 10% of the work. The other 90% is you. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you why you need a scanner and how this is gonna help you, all right? Stick around. All right, so I saved the time of the video and just hooked it right up to the car. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you why you would need a scanner like this, okay? Why the scanner is, um, it's useless if you don't know what you're doing with it. I've seen too many people um, make the mistake. And the, the worst part about cars is you have to make mistakes in order to know how to do stuff right. That's the only reason I know how to do things the right way, almost all the time. I still make mistakes, I'm, I'm dumb. I, you know, I just, I fix cars. So um, uh, I'll see people will, will read, a, um, read, read a fault code or not even a fault code. Let's say you have a problem your window's not working, okay? I'm gonna specifically choose the driver's front window. The window's not working. So you replace the switch, the window motor, you check the fuse, and it's still not working, okay? So now you gotta know what else could it be, all right? Um, this is when a scanner can really be helpful and come into play. So let me show you how I would diagnose it and why you would wanna use a scanner like this, all right? All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Okay, <clears throat> almost every car, the window switch goes to a door control module or it goes to a body control module that controls the window. Rarely anymore does the switch go right to the motor. Okay, so let's say you have a problem with the window and you're not sure if it's the switch or if it's the module and you wanna, you wanna diagnose it before you replace stuff. All right, so instead of doing auto scan going through that, I'm gonna go straight through control unit. I'm gonna go to body. And I'm gonna go to doors in this car because I know the door control module controls the motor, all right? Trying to get my bald head out of the screen. I'll get a screen recorder in the future. All right, so we're gonna go to the driver's side. All right, so now everybody's like, oh, let me read a code. There's no codes, what do I do? The only time codes happen are when the control module sees two values it doesn't like, all right, um, or or faults with something unplugged, a circuit. Okay, so you're not always gonna get codes. That's when that's when it takes you to know what you're looking for in the situation. So um, what I like doing is two things. So let's start with live data, right? So you're gonna be able to see everything the control module sees. Okay, so let me find, um, okay, that's extra stuff there. So power window driver switch, not pressed. All right, so let's see what happens. Pressed, 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 okay? That's what you're looking for. Now let's say you're pushing this and nothing happens. The module doesn't show pressed. Now we know it's between the switch and the module, easy, easy diagnosis, okay? 
um, that, that solves that right then and there, that it's a bad switch. Uh, so what you would have to check is the switch connections from the switch to the module, call it a day, all right? Now, it also shows you, see how it says manual close? You can do auto by clicking if, if you have an automatic switch. So it's showing you all that stuff, right? So let's say you have a, a window switch that's working, but it's not working for auto. Well, you just seen that it's showing that it's pressing, all right? So that would solve that if it's a switch or something like that, all right? So that's how, that's how you use live data to verify that what you're working is actually working. In today's cars, let me, let me show you me. In today's cars, everything you can do in the car to activate something, I can almost guarantee, because I haven't been through every car, that you can see it happen in the module live data. That's when live data becomes important. The worst live data our engine and transmission because then you really have to understand how it operates but everything else as far as a window switch or a window motor when you look in live data you're looking to see if what you're operating is being read by the control unit it's as simple as that all right if it can't be read then what we're going to do is we're going to activate what we want to activate and i'll show you that next so i'm going to back out of here i love this scanner so far by the way i'm going to go to active test and then I'm going to go to window control. And then, no, I don't want to verify the live data. All right. So now here, I'm going to use the, the scanner to work the window. All right. So I'm going to do down. Boom. All right. So now let's say the switch does nothing. You're reading the live data. You're getting no live data for the switch but you can activate it. You just verified the module's good, the fuse is good, the wiring is good, and the motor's good. Everything leads back to the switch. Is that making sense? Hope it makes sense. So now we're gonna go up, all right? Let's say the switch goes down, but it won't go up, okay? Live data. You're gonna use live data to see, can I see if I'm pushing the switch down? Yes, can I see if I'm pulling the switch up? If it's, if it's not registering anything, we're back to the switch. So now to verify the motor works, we're gonna go up 2.5 seconds. boom that is exactly why you would need this scanner okay so again so uh the scanner itself is useless if you don't know why you're using it all right everybody just wants a fault code man i wish i wish they were that easy it's not um but as you just saw the actual diagnosis is easy when you know the path of how it works the tricky part is do you know how it works so um typically and I apologize if I if I, I talk weird on videos. It, if you met me in person, I don't talk like that. I'm just trying to trying to be more of a teacher to, to show you guys how I diagnose stuff, right? Um, try not to cuss as well. I, don't, I cuss a lot. So uh, um, you can do this with anything. It, you know, rear, window, front, anything that the switch can do, you can read in the door module, right? And we just verified that we can read the live data, we can actuate the motor, Everything is working. Of course, we have no customer complaint. All right. All right, so I'm gonna get into another module. Let me go to I'm gonna try I don't see it here. Let's body. Oh, okay. Let me try chassis. That there, there we go. I think that's what I was looking for. Let's see. All right, live data. All right. Well, this is more live data, but all you're gonna see is you're gonna see the angle that I'm steering the steering wheel at. Okay. So that's what you're looking at when you see that. All right. So live data again. You can read with live data. Still learning i just hooked this up this is new for me you guys seen a bunch of reviews on scanners i'm not going to do a review with this i'm going to just show you what we need to do so what i'm looking for is a steering column control module or a tip them which you know what might be the central gateway all right so live data the 
Just want to show you some more live data stuff. I'm sure you get, I'm sure you get it by now, but okay. So left front door jar switch, right? Something as simple as that. Now it's a jar. Doors open. Okay, closed, open. That's what you're looking for, right? So if you had a interior lights not coming on, and when you open the door, you know you would look for that. All doors lock. Left low beam. Left high beam. Okay, so I'm pulling the high beam switch. All right. So that's what I'm doing. Pulling the high beam, okay? Let's see the lights in the garage. All right, so that's verifying that the multifunction switch is working. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, let's say you pull this and no high beams, right? No high beam in the ind indicator. So you're looking in the central gateway to see if I activate this switch, is it reading? You know, yes, it is reading. Okay, good. So now we got to verify why it's not actuating, which, you know, would bring us to another issue. So here we go. Wiper low. On. Okay. I have it clicked on. All right. Click it off. Ready? Click it on. All right. So that, so if you have a wiper issue, you know, it's showing us all the wipers. Now we're going to go high. There you go. Wipers on high. All right. Washer. Pushing the washer. Okay. You know, so you get to use the scanner to see everything that the module needs to see. So by doing this, I just verified the stock is working. The steering column module, which I believe there's one, is communicating with the central gateway, and the central gateway is reading and actuating everything it needs to do. All right, I, and you know, it's just, this is redundant now, so now I'm gonna go hazard switch, okay? True, false, true. Some may say yes, no, on, off. This says true, false, all right? So I hope, I really hope this helps, um, you know, understand why understand why you would need a scanner like this <clears throat> so um it's very important to understand all the functions of the car or or find a way to figure out how the car communicates or or what modules it uses to activate stuff these autel scanners are great i help people a lot with these scanners i just got one myself i want to be using it in a lot of videos the um the things you can do with the autel are damn near if not better than the factory stuff, because you have options to change coding, which you, sometimes you can't in uh, in, in the, the car. So um, I, I love the scanner. I recommend it. Um, I will recommend you speak to Curtis and purchase through him. Um, I'll send a link to his video. You can find Curtis Harden on his YouTube channel dealing with Autel Consultancy. Dude is super smart, very nice to talk to. Um, and helps you find the scanner that, that you need for what you do. Um, I chose the MS906BT because as much as I like to try to help and do work, I don't do enough to justify programming and uh, and all that stuff. So I didn't have to worry about the J tool, which is called the J2534 pass-through for programming modules. Um, I do, you know, I'm not a seller of these. I don't make money off Autel. You know, I'm doing this just to help you guys. So before you buy the scanner, you have to know why you're buying it uh, and, and if it's going to help you in what you're doing. Because sometimes you do have to know what's happening in the car and what the car is seeing in, instead of just blindly replacing parts. So I hope that um, you learn that as much as you would love to just, oh, here's the problem, let me put this in there and see if it works. Sometimes you add more problems because what if the part you put in there was a bad part? It happens. So now you just added another issue and here you thought that that would have been it and it was it, but you put a bad part in. So now you're going to, you know, go chasing down the next problem when all you have to do is, is have a scanner like this or have access to a scanner like this. And then it can show you what you're reading and, it, and if it's actually doing it, you know, and because you can activate stuff with the scanner, which is what we call bi-directional that's when you can check for power and ground at certain things because sometimes when you unplug certain things like light bulbs or window motors if the module doesn't see certain signals it won't send power because it doesn't know that it's connected so it doesn't want to short the wires and cause damage to itself you know the, the cars can be very very smart 
and I know I'm just doing this in my Dodge Grand Caravan, this translates over to every car, all right? That's how cars work. Everything communicates now in these cars. Um, no longer does it go from a switch to whatever you're working. It all goes through a module and the module performs the action, all right? The only thing that may not go through a module might be a horn. And I doubt even that, because now most times the horn is through a control module. And you can tell that by if you try to do a quick beep, if you ever try to do like a meep, meep, they don't do it. They're like, mah, mah, because the, the module can't work that fast as if you you know were to were to just meep, meep, uh, a horn to be nice to somebody. So now just when you want to give a little meep, meep, the guy in front of you is giving you the finger because you laid on the horn too long when it wasn't, it wasn't you. It was, it was the car that did it, you know, kind of trying to get you beat up. Um, so I hope this helps. Uh, uh, you know, I, I want to, I want to make you guys and, and gals and kids, everybody that watches my channel, I'm going to turn you guys into master techs. All right. To become a master tech, you have to realize that you will never, ever know everything there is to know about a car. You will never, ever experience everything there is to experience about a car. New things happen all the time. They don't surprise me anymore because they're so shocking that it's like, yeah, I suppose it can happen you know, you, why not, right? Like the things that I see. So um, uh, hit me with a like, subscribe, feel free to comment if this was helpful or not, you know, um, what else you would like to see helpful videos on. The more content I could give you what you guys want, that's what I want to do. You know, I don't know what you need. So I'm just trying to think what would help me that took me a while to learn. And that's what I'm trying to make to get out there for you guys. So um, don't be a knucklehead. Do it the right way. One time. Not 20 times. One time. Uh, and I also want to give a shout out to uh, DCF Garage. He hit me up. I helped him out with a problem. We ran into an issue where the iCarsoft would not erase airbag light codes. So he had to go to somebody that had a dealer scanner and it was able to erase the airbag code. So we were on a wild goose chase diagnosing things that really weren't there. So as much as I love aftermarket scanners for best bang for the buck, you do have to be careful, you know, and, and sometimes it just, it can't do the function you need to do. So um, if you have any issues, you know, reach out. So uh, be safe. I really appreciate all those that, that like and subscribe and, um, and, and take time to watch my videos and, and those that take time to comment. I really do want to help, you know, so uh, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.